Is it time to give up meat and turn vegan? Uh, much has been made of the benefits of a vegan diet, but how much of that is fact? Well, to answer that, I'm joined by vegan activist Ed Winter, also known as Earthling Ed. He's a prolific public speaker who's been invited to schools, universities, and businesses across the world to discuss the issue. And while in the meat corner, I have Chris Snowden, head of lifestyle economics at the IEA. Ed, I'm going to start with you. Sure. Thank you for joining me today. Can you explain to me, um, you, you are a vegan activist. Sure. So it's not just a, a lifestyle choice for you. It's, it's something you're very passionate about. Yeah. Do you feel that you envisage a world where everyone eventually uh, embraces the vegan approach? Well, hopefully so. I mean, obviously, I am aware that not everyone in the world is going to be able to make the options and you know, choose the choices that we have in, yeah. in the UK especially. But my hope is that in the UK, we'll shift towards a plant-based food system for all the merits that a plant-based food system would bring. Just talk us through it then. So sure. people watching this at home, they might not have heard of what the merits are. Yeah. Why is a vegan diet better for you than a meat-based diet? Well, I mean, veganism is, is a moral philosophy. So it's about removing or at least eliminating as far as is possible and practicable the exploitation of animals. Yeah. So there's a moral you know, obligation to it as well. But of course, it helps the environment, helps the planet. And there's also personal health um, kind of positives that can come from it as well. But it is about the animals fundamentally. So, yes, yeah, so you're not, it's not, you're not talking about from a, a personal point of view, from a selfish point sure. of view. This is more a kind of uh, a global perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's about trying to reduce suffering wherever we possibly can. Okay, but let me bring Chris in on this, because I'd be interested to hear the counter argument. Hey, dude. So, Earthling had just told me veganism wants to fight animal abuse and give animals rights. What are your thoughts? Has he ever had a protein before? What? I want your thoughts on what Ed said. Bold of you to assume I can even thought. But I can try. Okay, please try. Protein. What? Correct. Damn, you're right. Exactly. And it's my personal choice to not so personally pay for animals to be killed. Listen bro, people can be vegan, but don't force me to not force animals to die. Got it? Okay dude, I hear you, but what about- Vegans just need to live and let live, and by that, I mean live, and let me not let others live. What do you think of my thought? Do I smart? Dude, I'm shook. How are you so smart? Yeah. Okay, but let me bring Chris in on this, because I'd be interested to hear the counter argument to that. Chris, thanks for joining me today. Uh, are you a big carnivore? Are you a big fan of meat? Yep. <laughs> big fan of meat. And uh, what, what is there to object to in what Ed is saying? I mean, it seems quite, seems fair enough to me when he puts it like that. Well, people make their own moral judgments, don't they? I'm, I'm not interested in what other people uh, eat. If people want to be vegans or vegetarians or carnivores, it's of no concern to me whatsoever. I hear the arguments. <laughs> I make my own mind up, everyone should be free to make their own mind up, so go for it, whatever you, whatever you want to do. My only concern about the, the veganism and, and vegetarian movement is at some point in the future, it is possible that these people will become a majority, and once you get a majority, people who think that something is ethically um, unacceptable, then there's a good chance they're going to go out and try and ban it. So I'm, I'm all in favour of people being vegans, but I'd rather they remained a minority. My issue is that when you have a group of people against animal abuse, in the case that they become the majority, they might try and ban animal abuse. And I have a problem with this. So, I'm all in favor of people being against animal abuse, but I would rather have those people be a minority, so I can continue with animal abuse. What about what Ed says about the, uh, the animal rights aspect to this? I mean, to what extent, I mean, you say everyone should have their own right to make their own decisions about what they eat, and that's fair enough. But if we are, according to animals, their rights as well, don't they have to be taken into consideration to a degree? No, I don't. I mean, I think animals are essentially there to be killed neat. So, I mean, that argument is never going to cut the, you know, the the mustard with me, particularly. Obviously, there, you know, there, there are lines I, I wouldn't cross. I've never eaten veal, for example. I've never eaten foie gras. I think there's such a thing as unnecessary cruelty, uh, clearly. And I'm, you know, I happily sling people who torture cats and dogs and things in, in prison for quite a long period of time, not least because it's uh, usually a pretty good precursor to being a serial killer. But I think um, in the natural world, obviously billions of animals are killed and eaten every day by other animals. I don't see any particular reason why they shouldn't be killed and eaten by humans. So this is going to be something, Ed, that um, you will face routinely, is that, that of course, uh, you know, Chris is arguing from a position of natural law sure. there. We know we are on the food chain, yeah. are we not? There is something natural about eating meat. We have we have developed that way. Well, of course, we've eaten meat for thousands of years, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, and it's been instrumental in human survival in times of food scarcity. But, you know, the reference to other animals who eat other animals in the wild, well, they do that out of necessity. And the vegan argument is really that we don't have to do what we do to animals anymore, and that's why it becomes a moral issue. Uh, Chris said it was about unnecessary cruelty. That's why he didn't eat, you know, veal or, mm. or foie gras. 
But of course, we don't have to eat animal products, so it's all unnecessary. You know, and to a dairy cow who's killed for dairy or to a pig in a gas chamber who's killed for bacon, that suffering to them is just as severe as the suffering to a geese or a duck who's been exploited for foie gras. So when we look at this issue from that of the, the individual who's suffering, we realise that it's all unnecessary and, and that's why it's all immoral. Obviously, there, you know, there are lines I, I wouldn't cross. I've never eaten veal, for example. I've never eaten foie gras. I think there's such a thing as unnecessary cruelty. Uh, Chris said it was about unnecessary cruelty. That's why he didn't eat you know, veal or, mm. or foie gras. But of course, we don't have to eat animal products, so it's all unnecessary. You know, and to a dairy cow who's killed for dairy or to a pig... I think there's such a thing as unnecessary... ...gas chamber who's killed for bacon. That suffering to them is just as severe as the suffering to a geese or a duck who's been exploited for foie gras. So when we look at this issue from that of the, the individual who's suffering, we realise that it's all unnecessary, and, and that's why it's all immoral. But doesn't your argument rest on the presupposition that... that uh animal life and human life should be seen almost on a par and that rights are accorded uh, to everyone, mm. whereas, whereas Christopher's argument is more that well, human beings are more important than animals. Well, we don't have to view non-human animals as being the same as, as human animals to, to understand why it's wrong to kill them. We just have to understand that their right to life and their right to their own autonomy transcends the reasons we use to exploit them. So taste pleasure, for example, or convenience. You know, that's what we have to really kind of underpin with this conversation is, is their right to life and mm. the suffering they endure in farms and slaughterhouses worth more than our sensory pleasure? You know, what has higher value, life or taste, fundamentally? OK, so Christopher, when, when you hear that argument, um, do you think that there is a case here that, I mean, Ed is trying to persuade people of his, his point of view. Do you think that's ever a view that people will buy into, ultimately? Or is there just something too innate about our taste for meat? There's more vegans than there ever been before. I think there's probably more vegetarians than there's ever been before. A lot of people get on and get off that particular um, bandwagon. But you can see how, you know, you can see the, the argument. I don't, it's not like I disagree with the argument, really. It's just, it, it's that's the point of view, which and I just don't hold it. And you'll never get me to accept that an animal's life is worth the same as a human's life. And I don't think it's something you could ever prove empirically either way, you know? What do you make of, uh, I mean, there's obviously been a rise of uh, very militant uh, uh, veganism with people for calling for veganism to be a protected characteristic within the law. Do you think that this is something that you would, uh, you understand in any way? Well, not really. I mean, I understand there are vegan militants and I think it's potentially quite a dangerous thing because once you have a lot of people who think that animals' life, that chicken's life is worth the same as a human being's, then I suppose they feel morally entitled to go around um, attacking people who, who rear chickens or whatever. I suppose that when you have somebody who thinks chickens should have the right to not be attacked, you will have people who will feel morally entitled to attack me, while I am attacking a chicken. Like come on bro, just let me attack the chicken and stop attacking me. So pushy, seriously. You make a very persuasive case because we're sitting here having this discussion, but I mentioned the sort of more militant approach. Um, do you worry that when you have more militant voices within this debate, they're actually putting people off your argument. Well, well, yes and no. I mean, I don't think that this idea of militant veganism is really representative. I think it's kind of a media talking point that's been blown out of proportion, to be you know, perfectly honest. But I see it's also been something I can play to my advantage, because hopefully by having reasonable, constructive conversations, it shows to people that veganism isn't this extremist ideology. In fact, it's just this kind of extension of the values we already have. Yeah. How often do we hear that Brit Britain is a nation of animal lovers and that we stand against animal suffering and cruelty? Well, I, I like to believe that's how people genuinely feel. So now all people have to do is recognise that their morality already exists when it comes to animals, you know, that strong morality, and then work out whether or not the unnecessary exploitation, suffering and death of a billion land animals, and when it comes to marine animals much more, of course, in this country alone aligns with that morality, or indeed is actually contradictory to that. Uh, final word to you, Christopher. I'm assuming you're not persuaded by what you just heard there. No, I'm not. I remain of the view that animals, for the most part, are there to be uh, killed and eaten. Most of them have a perfectly good life. If you are a, a sheep raised by a farmer, you'll, you'll just be basically standing around in a field eating grass for a period of time, and then one day you'll get a bolt in the back of your head. It's a pretty painless way to go. Everybody dies. Ultimately, I don't consider that to be unnecessary cruelty. In actual fact, I think that a lot of animals get a better death than uh, human beings do, but that's a different uh, question. Maybe well, human beings don't have their friends, but obviously. Listen. You goddamn vegans, I remain of the view that animals are there to be killed and eaten. Most will have a perfectly good life, for example, a life that is cut short when you have 15 or more years left to live. Yes, a perfect life is a life cut short. Makes a lot of sense. Also, since everybody dies, it is justified for me to shoot a lamb in the back of the head, who wants to live. 
I don't consider shooting a lamb in the back of the head to be unnecessary cruelty, even though the lamb's meat is not necessary for my survival. Also, a lot of animals get a better death than humans do, for example, being thrown in a gas chamber, being hung upside down to have your throat slit, and of course, being shot in the head. These are better ways to die than most humans who die of old age. Yes. Yeah, makes sense. Protein. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird, stupid wannabe sense of irony here. W who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird, stupid...